Hello and welcome to the Maker Jane channel, where I share all things English paper piecing, from tips and tutorials to projects and more. So if you love EPP like I do, please consider subscribing. My name is Janie, and in this video, I'm beginning a brand new mini series, both here on my channel, as well as over on my blog. And it is all about getting started with English paper piecing. It's going to be a four week series and each week we're going to cover a different topic of how to get started with English paper piecing. Basically, I'll be walking you through the steps as if you are going to start English paper piecing and we actually are going to be working on a project as well. So if you're brand new to English paper piecing, you may want to definitely consider subscribing to follow along this mini series so that you can learn step by step with me. I'm going to walk you through everything from what supplies you're going to need, what tools you're going to need, which is what I'll be discussing later on in this video. And we're going to go through each step of the English paper piecing process all the way to the end of finishing your project. The project we're going to be making during this series is a bookmark, and it's such a small and quick make that you're going to be able to make several of them uh, at once or you know one right after the other. And if you find that you end up enjoying English paper piecing, you're probably gonna be wanting to make a bunch of these bookmarks. You can keep them for yourself. You can hand them out to friends. Uh, I use them in my cookbooks. I use them in my bullet journal. I do still read um, books. If you don't read books, then you probably will find another use for them. But if you do read books, uh, you can never have too many bookmarks, as I'm sure you know. So I'll be doing a video for each week of the series. And as I mentioned, it's a four week series starting this week. There'll be a video here on my channel. So be sure to subscribe if you wanna follow along the series as well as do the project with me. And I will also be posting a blog post each week on over on my website. And I'll be putting a link down below each video to the blog post. The blog posts are gonna have a lot more detail so you will want to check that blog post out in addition to this video. So to get started with English paper piecing, you're going to need only six tools or supplies. And I want to talk to you about those today. So let's head over to the table and I'll show you each of the tools and supplies that you're going to need and talk a little bit about each one. The first item you're going to need to get started in English paper piecing is fabric. So I've got some examples of fabric here. These are each what's called a fat quarter, and they're approximately 18 inches wide by 20, 20, 21 or 22 inches deep. Now, you're not gonna need that much fabric for this bookmark project, but just keep in mind that if you are planning on English paper piecing into the future, you may want to start collecting fat quarter sized fabric bundles if you don't already have them, because these are the perfect size fabrics to do English paper piecing with. And for our bookmark project, we will need three different types of fabric or three different colors or prints of fabric. So you can see I have that here. Now the size that we're gonna need for our bookmark project is about the size of this piece of fabric here. You're gonna wanna get at least a nine inch square piece of fabric. That's all you're going to need in three different colors, right? One, two, three. Uh, that's what you're going to need for the bookmark project. And you're not even going to use the whole piece of each fabric, um, but that is the minimum size that you'll need just to get started with this bookmark project. So where can you get fabric? Well, if you're a quilter, you most likely already have fat quarters. You most likely already have fabric. Uh, you most likely already have fabric scraps. So if you want to use fat quarters, great. If you want to use scraps, just make sure that your scrap pieces are each a minimum of nine inches square. If you are not a quilter and you don't have collection of fabric laying around, you've got a couple of options. I have often found fabric available at my local thrift shops. And um, those are a great place to find really inexpensive fabric. And usually you can find all sorts of different scraps 
And sometimes they'll have like a grab bag type of thing where they just stuff a bunch of fabric scraps into a bag and then you pay like a dollar for that bag or something like that. That's a great way to get a lot of different types of fabrics. The only problem with that is you don't really know what size fabrics you're getting. So keep that in mind. Another option from your thrift store uh, would be to purchase sheets. You could use old sheets and I would recommend that if the sheets have tags on them that you want to look for cotton sheets. It's just going to be a lot easier to work with. That's another option. Um, you could also use old uh, like button up shirts. That's a really good type of fabric as long as it's cotton. Uh, any button up shirt fabric would work great for English paper piecing. And again, you're looking for three different colors or three different patterns three different fabrics that are gonna play nice together. So you can see in this particular um, set of fabrics, let me get this out of the way, this isn't part of the project. These particular fabrics, they all relate to one another in some way. So the red has some white, which uh, gets along with the green, which also has white, as well as this blue also has white. And then as you can see, pretty obviously, the green and the blue relate because they both have green and blue in them. And we also have some red flowers over here. So that's another uh, connector with the red and the blue. So you just wanna find some fabric that plays nice together. Um, and by plays nice together, basically it's whatever looks good to your eye. And you can play around with different combinations for this project if you want. Um, so basically we are gonna need these three fabrics. One of these fabrics is gonna be the background for our bookmark and the other two fabrics we're going to English paper piece with. So just keep that in mind and I'll be explaining that more as we go through this series. So that's item number one that you're going to need to get started with English paper piecing, fabric. The second item that you need to get started with English paper piecing is what's called an EPP template. Now I've got two types of templates here. The most common template is something that is a pre-cut template. And let me pull these out of the bag for you so that you can get a better look at them without the um, glare from the lighting. So you can see here, it's basically a shape that has been cut out of paper. These are pre-cut and you can buy them this way. They are usually die cut or laser cut, so they're extremely accurate, and they're gonna make fitting your pieces together when you're English paper piecing a lot easier uh, when your pieces or your templates are accurate. So keep that in mind. So these are pre-cut uh, purchasable option. There's also a free option, and I'm gonna show you both, and then you can decide which one you want to do. So I'll move these over here. This is a free printable template that I have created that you can download and you can cut your own shapes. Whereas these are machine cut, so they're very accurate. These you're going to be cutting by hand. And as long as you've got scissors and you've got a steady hand, these are totally fine for getting started with English paper piecing. If you're just getting started and you're a brand new beginner to English paper piecing, I would start with something like this rather than something like this. Because for one, it's free, you're not investing any money, and you can try it out, see if you like it. If you are already experienced or you know you're gonna like English paper piecing and you would prefer not to spend the time cutting your own templates, you can purchase these pre-cut templates from my shop, which again, I will put down in the description below and you can get those there. And I have put a link down below in the description uh, where you can download this free template. All right, let me get these pre-cuts out of the way. I'm gonna show you how you can cut your free printable template with your scissors. So the third item on our uh, tools needed for English paper piecing is scissors. 
and you really only need one pair of scissors, but if you have a second pair of scissors that happen to be dedicated to fabric scissors, which I have indicated here for myself as a little personal reminder, and anyone else that may want to come in here and use my scissors, is um, these are my fabric scissors. So I will be using these for fabric, and I'll be using these for paper. If you don't sew and you don't have fabric scissors, don't stress about it, no big deal. Just use your office scissors for both your paper and your fabric, not a big deal, okay? Before we get to the fourth item, I'm just gonna show you real quick how I cut out these free templates. So it's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just guide you through it. The first cuts you wanna make are gonna be along those dotted lines. And you're just gonna cut each of those, you know, strips along the dotted line. And you can start this way or you can start this way. It doesn't really matter. So you cut along the dotted line in one direction. And you just wanna to try to stay on that dotted line as best as you can. Take your time with this. The beautiful thing about English paper piecing is it's a very slow and meditative process. So it's meant to be relaxing. Uh, it's not meant to make you feel stressed or rushed in any way, okay? So I just cut out one strip. You're gonna continue cutting the rest of the sheet out into strips just like this. And then you're gonna go across on the dotted line this way. And you'll end up with little squares that have hexagons inside of them. And again, you wanna go nice and slow. You wanna to try to cut as accurately as possible and stay on that dotted line. Okay, so you get the idea there. Now, the next thing that we'll do, and this is the last step for making your own templates cutting your own templates if you decide to do that. Go ahead and take one of your squares that has your hexagon inside and you're just going to cut along the black solid line and cut off those corners of that square. And you'll do that for each one. until you have enough templates for your English paper piecing project. Now for our particular project that we're gonna be working on for the bookmarks, you're going to need five hexagons. And we are making a bookmark that is going to have uh, five hexagon shapes on the front of the bookmark. You do have the option of putting another five hexagons on the back of the bookmark, and that's totally up to you. I'm gonna leave that up to you, but you are gonna need a minimum of five finished hexagon shapes for our bookmark project in this series. So whether you decide to make your own hexagons or to purchase pre-cut hexagons, that's a decision that you're gonna need to make and you're gonna need to get your templates prepared before next week because we will be starting to use these in next week's video uh, for the next part of this series. So again, if you wanna purchase pre-cut templates. There's a link down below in the description where you can buy these already made for you. You don't have to bother cutting your own. Or if you prefer to print off your own and cut your own, then there's also, whoop, there's also a link down below where you can download these templates and then just cut them out just like I showed you with scissors. So now that we've talked about templates, let's move on to the next item that you're going to need for English paper piecing is some glue. And it's not just any glue, you're actually want, going to want to get a glue stick of some sort. This just happens to be Elmer's glue. And first thing that you wanna look for is that it's an actual stick. You do not wanna use a liquid glue. It definitely needs to be a solid 
glue stick, okay? And the color doesn't really matter. Um, usually the glue will dry clear. So this is a disappearing purple. It's a really dark purple when you put it on, but as it dries, it actually turns clear. So you're not gonna see it. The other thing that you wanna make sure that you're looking for in your glue sticks is that it's washable. Because we are gluing our fabric to our templates, which I'm gonna cover all the details of that in next week's video, we wanna make sure it's washable because when we go to wash our project, it will wash that glue out and it won't cause any problems with the fabric later on down the road. So you can find this glue, if you don't happen to already have some, at your local grocery store or your local big box store. I actually was able to find a very large package. Um, it's got six plus two, so there were eight sticks in this package, and I got this package for less than $2 at my local grocery store. So keep your eyes out next time you're at the grocery store or out grocery shopping. Um, walk down the school supply aisle and see what you can find in the way of some glue sticks. There are other types of glue sticks on the market that are made specifically for fabric and for sewing purposes. They are great. However, they're a lot more expensive than your basic school glue stick. And if you're just getting started with English paper piecing, you really don't need to invest the money in those right now. Just get the least expensive glue that you can find and just make sure again that it's a solid stick and that it's washable and you're gonna be fine. And again, next week when we get to the basting step, I'll show you exactly how to use these wider and fatter glue sticks so that you're not getting your hands all sticky and all that. So I'll show you some tips on how I use these fat glue sticks next week. So that is the fourth item that you're gonna need, fourth tool or supply that you're gonna need for English paper piecing. The fifth item that you're going to need are some hand sewing needles. Let me show you a couple different examples. Now, this first package, you should be able to get at your local big box store. I just wanted to show you this because for one, I wanna show you how inexpensive they are if you don't already have some sewing needles. And I wanna show you the different sizes of needles that you can often find in packages like this. These needles are gonna be a little bit too big for English paper piecing. The goal with English paper piecing is to not only stitch your shapes together, but you also wanna to try to take the smallest stitches possible so that your stitches don't show uh, on the front of your work. So these are some good needles because the, the size of the eye is nice and large and you can thread the needle pretty easily. But the thickness of the needle is a little too much. Pull these out so I can show you. So I'm gonna leave these big fat ones in there. Those we don't wanna use for English paper piecing. But there's a few in here that you might, yep, I see two that I would use for English paper piecing. So you might have already picked them out. These two right here, side by side, those are thin enough that I would use them for EPP. And what I like about these needles is the eye is nice and large. So if you don't happen to have needles yet, go to your local big box store. You're gonna to wanna to look for sharps. And the sizes that are in this package range from one to five. You're gonna to wanna to look for that and you'll wanna find a needle in that package that is skinny, skinny enough for our purposes. You could probably also get away with a needle this size. These are gonna be a little bit better if you're just getting used to English paper piecing because they're thicker, they're not gonna bend, they're gonna be a lot stronger of a needle. So whatever you can find, really any of these sizes that's in my hand right now would work just fine for English paper piecing. So hopefully you can see those, okay. The last item you're gonna need for your English paper piecing adventure is sewing thread. So you can see here, I've got two different spools of thread. These are both all purpose thread, which is a polyester thread. I recommend that you get or use polyester thread for your English paper piecing if you're just getting started. It's a stronger thread than cotton and it's gonna help you to avoid any thread breakage. You're only gonna need one spool of thread. There's no need to buy two if you don't happen to already have thread. So what you wanna look for in your thread 
is something that's going to match your fabric. Now, let me pull the fabric back in to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. For our bookmark project, I mentioned earlier that I'm going to be using a background fabric. And then on top of that background fabric, we're going to be adding some hexagons. I have some hexagons that are already basted and can be used in any project. And for the purposes of this video, just know that um, I'm not using this particular fabric for the project we'll be making, but I just want to show you what I'm trying to explain here. So I've decided for my bookmark project, I'm going to be using these two fabrics to make my hexagons out of. Okay. Once our hexagons are made and all stitched together, so we're going to stitch them in a design, then we are going to attach it to our background fabric. Okay, so I've decided that I'm going to use this red fabric for my background fabric, and I'm going to use these two fabrics for my hexagons. So the thread that you want to choose needs to match one or both of your hexagon fabrics. So if I was going to stitch these onto my red background, which we're going to get into all the details of that in future videos, but just relating to thread. If I decide to go ahead and stitch these onto my background fabric, whatever thread you use, you want it to match your hexagon. So I would use a teal thread for this and not a red thread. The reason is because it's going to help hide your stitches better when we go to attach it to the background fabric. Okay, so whatever colors you decide to use for your hexagons, you're going to want to use a matching thread that matches either or of those fabrics. It doesn't really matter because we're going to be stitching these two colors together. Uh, and I don't want you to have to switch your, your thread out every time we go to sew one of the hexagons down. Just use one color. So I think what I will end up using is... Um, possibly this green thread because it's going to match well with the green and it's light enough to um, to hopefully not be seen when we are stitching around the blue fabric. But we'll get to that in future videos. Just know that you're going to need some polyester thread for your English paper piecing bookmark project that we're working on in this series. So that's all you need to get started English paper piecing. Pretty simple, huh? All those tools you most likely already have. And if there's a few that you don't have, they're very easy to get access to. Just to do a quick recap, I want to review those six items. And then I'm going to talk about what you're going to need to do to prepare for next week's video. If you decide you want to follow along with the series and the bookmark project. Number one is fabric. And you don't need a lot of fabric for the project we're going to be doing. You can use scraps. You could even use old clothing. Um, whatever you can get your hands on is pretty much going to work. And as you saw, you don't, you're not going to need much for this particular project. The second item you're going to need for English paper piecing are the templates. And there's two main ways of getting templates. One is you can purchase them already pre-cut for you. And the other way is to make your own templates. The third item you're going to need for English paper piecing is scissors. And if you're making your own templates, you're going to want scissors that you use to cut paper. Any regular plain old office scissors works totally fine for making your own templates. You're also going to need scissors to cut your fabric. So if you are a quilter and you have fabric scissors, I recommend you use those. If you're not a quilter and you're brand new to textiles and any quilting, you can get away with using your office scissors for your fabric cutting. As long as you've got sharp scissors that you're working with, it should be no problem to cut out both your templates if you're making your own and your fabric. The fourth item you're going to need for English paper piecing is glue. And I recommend using glue, especially if you're just getting started with English paper piecing, uh, for the basting process. There's multiple ways to baste English paper piecing, but I find the glue to be the most user-friendly and with the least learning curve. In next week's video, I'll be showing you how to use that glue to baste your fabric to your templates. The fifth item you need for English paper piecing is a hand sewing needle. And if you've never done any hand sewing before, these are fairly easy to get. You can get them at your local big box, um, any local craft store. Just make sure you pick up the type of sewing needle that I showed you earlier in the video. 
The sixth and final item you're going to need for English paper piecing is some sewing thread. Now, if you're a quilter, you've already got that on hand. And if you are not a quilter, you've never sewn before, that's another item that you can pick up at your local big box store or local craft store. So if you do need to pick some up, just make sure you get polyester thread. It's the strongest of the threads that are out there um, that are the common threads. There's polyester and cotton, and you'll wanna make sure to get polyester. So those are the six tools or items that you need to get started with English paper piecing. If there's any items on that list that you don't yet have, what you need to do before next week is find where you can get those items, whether it's online or at a local shop near you, get your items and just get prepared for next week. Because next week, we're gonna actually be starting your English paper piecing process. Now, regarding templates, you're gonna need to make sure that your templates are cut and ready to go. So if you need to order pre-cut templates, do that as soon as possible so that they arrive in time for our next step in English paper piecing. If you're making your own English paper piecing templates, then check out the link down below where you download the templates that I've prepared for you, cut them out and get them all ready before next week. I will be releasing each video every Sunday, so you'll have the whole week after that to work on your project. So this week, you've got the entire week to gather all of your tools and your supplies, which all of is only six, and just make sure you've got everything ready to go. All right, that's it for the first video in the mini series, getting started with English paper piecing. Next week, we're gonna get into cutting our fabric and basting our fabric around our template pieces. So if you'd like to join in the fun and make a English paper piecing bookmark along with me, be sure to subscribe here to my channel and check out the blog. I'm gonna have more details in the blog post for each week. I'm looking forward to doing this series with you and I'll see you next week with our basting and cutting in our Getting Started with English Paper Piecing series. Thanks for watching this video.